Welcome. In this lecture, we would understand why is waste generated and how can we manage it. But before we begin into details of any of these, let's understand what is waste. In simple definition, I can say what is not useful or worthless has no value for me, is a waste for me. Now, the definition of waste for each individual might change, but broadly, we can say any form of household waste, office waste, industrial waste, factory waste, hospital waste. Uh, any form of excreta uh, is an example of waste. Now, how do we classify waste? Classification of waste can be done broadly on four parameters. The first parameter is based on its impact on human health. So, it can be toxic, non-toxic or pathogenic. Pathogenic, as the name suggests, is disease causing. Now, when it is disease causing, the only example I can cite here, which could be a best match, would be Hospital waste. So hospital waste can be disease causing and therefore we say it is pathogenic in nature. The next is non-toxic. Paper waste, uh, waste of food is an example of non-toxic waste because it is harmless to environment. Then is the toxic waste. Toxic waste is a waste which is harmful to the environment. Industrial waste, factory discharge, um, any kind of effluent being released is toxic in nature. So this is the first classification. The second classification I can say is based on the nature of the substance, whether it is decaying or not. So one is biodegradable. The second is non-biodegradable. Paper, wood, wool, compost, all of these are what? They are degradable. They are degradable in the atmosphere, uh, in the, the system and therefore we say they are biodegradable. Now, what would be an example of non-biodegradable? Non-biodegradable, I can simply say anything which is generated from uh, plastic or polymer base is an example of non-biodegradable. It cannot be degraded back. It can be recycled, but it is not degradable, right? Similarly, industrial waste, uh, mainly in the form of arsenic, lead, are non-biodegradable. The next is based on the physical state. Based on the physical state, waste can be classified as solid, liquid, and gas. Solid waste would include plastic, metal are examples of solid waste. Liquid waste, sewage, sludge is an example of liquid waste. Gaseous waste, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxides, fly ash, all examples of gaseous waste. The next is based on the source of generation. The waste which is generated from the household purpose is called as domestic waste. Garbage, rubbish, ash would be an example of domestic waste. Agricultural waste generated from agriculture. Pesticides, fertil uh, fertilizers, residue from crop are all examples of agricultural waste. The next is community waste. Community waste which comes in from a community at large. So for example, from the educational institutions, from the offices, shops, the waste which is generated is known as community waste. The next, next is industrial waste. Under industrial waste, we have various criteria. I can say industrial waste could be electronic waste. Electronic waste would include computers, computer accessories which are not useful, stereo systems, televisions, radios are all examples of electronic waste. On the other hand, industrial waste would also include biomedical waste, hospital waste. This would have uh, waste from hospitals, clinic, pathological laboratories. The next is uh, municipal waste. Municipal waste would include discharge from public places, discharge from public toilets. The next is sewage sludge. Now sewage sludge is again an important component. Uh, besides this, there is another important uh, component based on the source of generation which is exhaust from automobiles. So automobile, another important source of pollution or waste we can say here. Now, uh, what is the basic classification is important. I quickly summarize it again. So there is four bases. One is based on health. The other is based on decaying nature. The next is based on the state, the physical state of solid, liquid and gas. And the third is based on uh, how do you uh, have the source of generation of the waste. Now how do we dispose the waste? 
how do we manage waste is a big concern we know what is waste how it is generated but our actual concern is to manage that waste so this management could again be done by four simple ways it could be either by collection and segregation transportation proper disposal and incineration let's understand each of these one by one under collection and segregation i can classify the waste into the previous criteria that i said biodegradable non biodegradable and re recyclable so what is biodegradable i can change it into a form of compost that can be in the form of litter food residue and this could become manure the next is recyclable so plastic tin foils aluminum foils are all examples of recyclable the next is non biodegradable uh automobile waste tube lights torches are example of non biodegradable the next is transportation of waste now waste in itself is harmful for the atmosphere has toxic elements as well so proper transportation is important now how do you transport it is transported in trolleys vans and taken to safe areas then for the waste which is generated from household it is transported through the sewer lines uh, the idea is to minimize the risk for the public so any waste which is generated from the hospital must be transported carefully because it could be pathogenic it could lead to diseases in the community the next is how do we dispose the waste is again important three simple methods open dumping sanitary landfilling and composting let's understand these one by one open dumping is very conventional method it is the least expensive method go away from the city and the surrounding and dump the waste over the period of time it would degrade and would be recycled into the system the next is sanitary landfilling now this is again an interesting way what is done is low lying areas are dug now the waste is collected in that low lying area and that layer is filled with soil now once it is filled with soil this area or this land could be reclaimed it could be used for the purpose of uh, creating a children's park a garden area and this is what is known as sanitary landfilling the next method is known as composting the idea of composting is very simple take a biodegradable waste and that biodegradable waste convert that into manure this could be uh, animal excreta this could be leftover food uh, this could be peelings of the vegetable now this over the period of time gets converted into manure which could be used in replacement to the artificial fertilizers for soil now composting can be done commercially so when composting is done commercially it takes around 1 to 2 weeks time in that 1 to 2 weeks time mechanical aerators and digesters are used in which the process of composting is completed the next important method is incineration now incineration is an important method where uh the substances which are combustible are actually burnt and the waste is collected and uh, into uh, the waste is converted into ash and that ash is collected so what happens there are two doors one is the door where you enter the waste so that is known as the garbage door the second is the door out which is known as the ash door and the ash here is collected so what actually incineration process does incineration process has a machine which is known as incinerator which actually is a furnace which has a very high temperature and also has a grating uh, machine which cuts the waste or uh, breaks the waste into smaller parts and then there is a chimney which releases the ash the next is uh in the air we do have pollutants pollutant is any undesirable substance which is present into the atmosphere now to remove that pollutant two important methods are used one is scrubber the other is electrostatic precipitator now the function of scrubber is important scrubber does what scrubber removes first of all it would remove the pollutant from the air moreover it would also remove the particulate matter small particulate matters which are present now scrubbers could be of two types wet scrubbers as well as dry scrubbers now wet scrubbers would do what they use a liquid component and the idea is to remove the solid liquid air from uh, or the gaseous parts from the contaminated air what are used 
few important names very very important from your examination perspective that you must remember also for your mcq choice or one line question one is activated alumina activated carbon silica gel all of these absorb the gas pollution and make the air clean so activated carbon activated alumina and then silica gel three of them extremely important from this topic right the next is if hydrogen fluoride gas is you uh, is there how can we purify it purify it we can use pure water to purify the hydrogen fluoride very very important the next is if the the waste is acidic we can use an alkaline if the waste is alkaline we can use an acid okay so either we can use an alkaline solution to clean out the acidic pollution which is because of sulfur or nitrogen oxides if it is an alkali pollution we can use acidic solution to neutralize it also if there are hydrocarbons we can use oil to absorb it so those are some of the important things now here is a diagram of an scrubber what happens is contaminated gas enters in there is a scrubbing liquid through which it goes and this is an example of wet scrubber so what happens is a liquid reservoir niche uh, in the bottom uh, so liquid reservoir is pre present at the bottom and then there is a gas separation unit in the center and the finally on the top you can see a layer which eliminates the mist and finally the clean gas comes out from this section and the scrubbing liquid from the lower section go goes out the next is electrostatic precipitators now what is the idea behind electrostatic precipitator as the name suggests uh, electrodes are used to have a successful electrostatic precipitator the idea is the pollution which is collected from the air or from the uh, from the atmosphere in the form of fumes or mist is used uh, this process of electrostatic precipitators or what is called as esps are commonly used in industries in cement factories they work on a simple principle that uh, the particulate matter acquires a charge when the electric field is passed through it so here as you can see in the diagram this is an electric field and as the particles pass through it they acquire charge so the gas is actually passed through the two electrodes now as the gas passes so here are thin metal rods and the solid particulates the incoming material that goes through now as the gas passed through this what would happen one gate is at high voltage the other gate is grounded or has uh, the collector electrode so what would happen the negatively charged particulates attract the po positively charged metal plates and vice versa so what would happen the particulate matters would deposit there and the outgoing air becomes a clean flow of air so that is where electrostatic precipitators are used so in this chapter what we need to understand so it's not just one set of electrodes but a huge set of electrodes which are in various compartments are used and the idea is to let the inflow of the air which has the particulate matters which has the pollutants and the air that is moving out from a electrostatic precipitator would be free uh, of the pollutant because the 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 pollutants would acquire a charge and they would get attracted to the positive plates the metal plates which are kept there so the two most important things or take away from this lecture are the concept of scrubber the concept of electrostatic precipitator and the use of activated carbon alumina and silica gel as an absorbent for air pollution so this was a quick summary in this lecture if you have any questions feel free to leave those in the comment below we'll be more than happy to answer your queries and stay tuned for more interesting lectures on biology have a wonderful day ahead